bad score. <laughs> Not bad. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. Oh, boy, oh, boy, 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 boy. Boy. Boy, boy. <laughs> Listen about this county championship. I know you'll all uphold the credit of the old oak, but don't forget I can only send four players. And John Baxter, our best player and skipper, he must go, of course. Oh, sure. There's no doubt about John the skipper. And there'll be no argument that young Ted Hill's our second best. No. So we only want two more. I know there's not much to choose. I suggest you play a game to decide. And the winning pair join John and Ted. What do you say, boys? Yeah. Well, a good yeah. Idea. Yeah. I don't know about that, Mr. Varden. What about Gaffer Giles? He's always telling us what a dab Andy was at Dodge. Why not put him in? Oh, <laughs> you can laugh and cackle, you young cock spatters. But if it weren't for my old rheumatics, I could show you, young puppy, something about Dodge. Dang me, if I couldn't, why I know that. <laughs> Never mind, Grandpa, I'm sure you could. Don't take any notice of Joe, he's only trying to tease you. <laughs> Have a drink with me. Thank you kindly, Miss Ann. You always was good to the old gaffer. And being in that Grand Air Army hasn't changed your bit. Air Army indeed, Grandpa. Surely you know by now that it's not the Air Army, but the Royal Air Force. Dang me, I never will get used to them newfangled names. Why, dang me if your body knows where they are nowadays. Oh. That's all right, Grandpa. There's the bottle. You help yourself to some beer. Thank you. Well, come on, what about the game? Come on, who's going to start? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Why, Mr. Baxter, what's the matter with you? There must be something very interesting to make the skipper forget his team. Oh, I'm sorry, Anne. As a matter of fact, it's very interesting. Goodness, you do sound serious. What is it you're reading? I'm dying of curiosity. Oh, just a question of politics. Foreign politics at that. Nothing for you to worry your pretty young head about. I wonder when you men will realize that women are not just frivolous creatures interested only in hats and cinemas. I thought we had proved we could take our full share in the happenings of today equally as well as the men. No, Anne, don't misunderstand me. I think you girls are doing a wonderful job. But politics are just a bit outside your interest. I wonder how much any of us know about Poland. You'd be surprised. Well, and what do you know, young lady? Wait and see. Oh. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Anne. Hello, Tom. Hello. Oh, I'm so pleased you came. I told you I'd come over. You didn't think I'd let you down, did you? Weren't you expecting me? Well, I didn't expect you on my first day of leave, but I was hoping. It is sweet of you. Now, look here, when you two are finished. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. I want Johnny to meet my father. One. Hello, Dad. Why, Tom, this is a pleasure. Why didn't you let me know you were coming over? Well, we didn't know we could get off today until the last moment. We just took a chance, didn't we, Johnny? That's right. Oh, Dad, meet my pal Johnny Mack, a blinking foreigner. I always like Tom's pals. I'm pleased to meet you. Glad to know you, sir. Find your lad a bit of a handful, but he'll mend in time. Total 20. 60, 22 to win. Oh, double 10. What's the matter with a double 11? I'm particular, I am. Good man. did it on The cup's as good as ours. John Baxter will have a job to keep up to your place, Sid. These drinks are on me. I'll go and have a word with John. Well, how did you get here? It's a bit of a wangle, I can tell you. I should say so. Oh, Johnny, this is my father. Dad, this is Flight Lieutenant Johnny Mack. The Polish Air Force. Glad to meet you, son. Been looking forward to meeting you, sir. Thank you. What a strange coincidence. Just before you came in, I was thinking of Poland. I was interested in an article I had read. When, lo and behold, Poland meets me in person. I must say, your name's not very Polish. And your English is so perfect, I wouldn't have thought you were a Pole. But for your flashes... It's nice of you to say so. As a matter of fact, I'm rather proud of my English. Uh, but tell me, what is it you've been reading about Poland that's so interesting? It's no good, Johnny. You can't put my father off as easily as that. And I dare say Mr. Barton wants to know about your murky past, too. So come clean. You should know something about these Poles. They won't talk unless they get a drink. So don't exploit him. Thanks for the tip. It may come in useful. I'll get him one. Don't forget me. That goes for Englishmen, too. <laughs> well, there's no story to be told, really. It's quite simple. I'm a Pole, but my name is Scottish, and actually I'm of Scottish descent. It's very strange, isn't it? Oh, no. 
Some hundreds of years ago, a lot of Scottish people settled in Poland. And as is the way with Scots, they became firmly rooted. They set up a number of industries and quickly began to export to England. Hides, furs, timber and so on. They liked the Polish people and the country. It's rather a nice country. So the Scots married the Polish girls. Their descendants kept their Scottish names. But gradually they became Poles, of course. And I'm one of them. I knew it. The first moment that he came in. You can always tell a Scot, even half the centuries. Well, here's luck to you. And to you, compatriot. You know, it's extraordinary how tradition lasts. Many of them still retain the old tartans of their forefathers. And some of them are lucky enough to be able to send their boys to Scotland to study. I was one of the lucky ones. As a youngster, I spent six years in Edinburgh. Then I went back to Poland and served a year with the Polish Air Force. Then when war broke out, I fought during those 35 days. And I came back here to carry on the fight. Well, that's my story. I warned you it wouldn't be very exciting. There's no need to be humble, Johnny. You know, he fought during the whole of the Battle of Britain. Oh, Anne, please. And do you know what he got his medals for? No, tell us, Anne. Oh, in our squadron, we've got a very peculiar custom. We get medals for opening beer bottles. Provided, of course, you don't spill the beer. One of the things that Johnny has learned from us is the art of understatement. That fighting is what that son of a gun loves most. Oh, uh, after Anne, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Tom has often told me of your deeds of bravery. I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us when I ask you to thank your Polish friends for the help they gave us. I sometimes think we forget the part they played. Thank you, Mr. Baxter. We played the game together with you, and we still play in the same team. I think things are a little difficult for you and your countrymen. Yes, very difficult. But we're hoping. There are many things that puzzle me in that article by Mr. Horbelisha. Horbelisha? Yes, in an article I was reading in this morning's paper. There are some passages which are worth bearing in mind. But what's it all about? There you are. See for yourself. Yes, Mr. Baxter. Some things are worth remembering. I wrote that article for you to read and think about. Honest and fair-minded people want to know the facts and to understand what is happening in the world. This is what I wrote. A sharp jolt has been given to the confidence engendered at Tehran. 